Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Ghost House. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with a blonde woman running through the street, screaming as if someone is chasing her. A ghost suddenly appears when she reaches a dead-end street. Instantly, hands from behind creep over her face and hold onto her mouth as the ghost approaches her. The ghost then puts her hand inside the blonde woman's mouth until all that's heard is her scream. A foreign couple named Jim and Julie are excited about their vacation. As they leave the airport, a friendly driver approaches them and offers his service, which they gladly accept. When they arrive at the hotel, Julie sees a ghost house full of offerings. According to the driver, the people put presents in the ghost houses so that they will not go to their houses. The couple go around the city with the driver as their tour guide. After a while, Julie asks the driver to stop for a moment because a ghost house catches her attention. She starts taking pictures of it when suddenly a beggar interrupts her. She leaves the place in fear. A little while later, the couple decide to eat in a fancy restaurant where Jim proposes to Julie and she happily accepts. Evening comes and the driver brings them back to the hotel. Before he leaves, he gives his calling card so that they can contact him whenever they need his service. As they enter the hotel, two foreign men named Robert and Bill talk to them. Soon after, Bill notices the fancy ring that Julie wears. When the couple tell them that they just got engaged, the men ask them to go out for a celebration. It seems like Jim doesn't like the idea of going out with the people whom they just met, but Julie already accepts the offer, so he doesn't have any choice but to go for it. As they wander around the city, the locals suddenly stare at Jim when he accidentally drops a coin. According to Robert, the locals believe that dropping a coin brings bad luck and you might even lose your finger. But Jim finds it hilarious. Bill then tells Julie that he's single while Robert is in a relationship. In the way Bill looks at Julie, it seems like he has a crush on her and possibly wants to crush his hormones on her. Finally, the group arrive at the red light district. Robert brings Jim inside the bar, where they drink alcohol and flirt with other girls. A girl then tongue massages Jim, leaving an iconic lipstick stamp on his face. While waiting outside, Bill suddenly asks Julie to let her hair down, then he gets the scarf that's tied to her hair. Shortly, Robert goes out and tells Julie that he'll bring them to an interesting place, where they'll see a lot of ghost houses. Since Julie is fond of it, she agrees without hesitation. Bill secretly talks to Robert, telling him that he's hesitant to continue their plan because his conscience is preventing him from doing it, since Julie is a nice person. Inside the car, Julie notices the lipstick stamp on Jim's face, which disappoints her a lot. After a while, Jim wakes up and finds out that their newly found friends will bring them to the countryside. He wants to back off, but Julie is determined to retaliate against him for kissing another woman. After a long drive, they finally arrive in the woods, where many ghost houses stand. Julie then expresses her disappointment at Jim and returns the engagement ring. Meanwhile, Robert and Bill go to a ghost house and tie Julie's scarf to a wooden doll. While Julie is taking pictures, Robert encourages her to get the wooden doll inside the ghost house. She's hesitant at first, but she notices that her scarf is tied to it. When she gets the wooden doll, Robert immediately runs. Jim chases Robert, but he already flees with Bill. Julie is left in front of the ghost house, holding the wooden doll. She then screams to death when she sees a ghost on top of the ghost house. Jim hurriedly goes back to Julie as he hears her scream. He finds Julie almost fainting, so he helps her leave that scary place in a hurry. Soon after, the couple stop walking to leave a voice message to the driver. While Jim is on the phone, Julie sees a man riding an elephant, approaching them but suddenly disappearing into thin air. When they reach the side of the road, Jim's phone finally gets a signal, so he immediately calls the driver to ask for help. Luckily, the driver arrives before it's almost dark. Jim wants the driver to bring them to the hospital because Julie looks unwell. But the driver says that the hospital is too far and Julie needs to be treated as soon as possible. So the driver brings the couple to the village where he came from. His aunts are terrified when they see an eye from Julie's throat, which means she's possessed with Watabe, a vengeful ghost. According to folklore, Watabe fell in love with a local man, but one day he had an affair with their young servant. Out of anger, Watabe set the house on fire to kill him. Unfortunately, she's burned alive inside, while the local man and the young servant survived the tragedy. It's said that Watabe leaves in the old ghost houses in the woods, and if someone disturbs her, she'll take their souls to the ghost world. Jim is disappointed when a virgin monk arrives, and not a doctor. The driver then tells him to trust them, because they know what they're doing. The monk, together with the aunties, prays over Julie, then puts amulets on her wrist, which will serve as her protection against the ghost. That night, Julie wakes up alone in the room, then stares at the doorway. 
Suddenly, the mosquito net is pulled away towards the dark doorway. Then Watabe, draped with a mosquito net, appears and walks slowly to Julie. Watabe suddenly disappears when Julie crosses her hand to avoid her. It's then revealed that Watabe wants to approach Julie in her dreams, but she's warded off because of the amulet given by the monk. The next morning, Julie wakes up and sees the monk and the aunties continuously praying. She regains her strength, and it seems like nothing bad has happened. When the driver and the couple leave, the people in the village gather in front of the ghost house to give offerings so that Watabe will not get into their houses. It's already the second day since Julie disturbed the vengeful Watabe. With the driver's help, the couple is able to go back to their hotel. Julie says that since yesterday, she's been dreaming of an angry woman whose face seems burned in fire and the woman wants to take her soul. But Jim says it's just a nightmare. In the hotel's corridor, Jim sees Julie's cutout scarf, so he thinks that Robert and Bill want to rob them. That's why they left them in the woods. Jim wants to go to the police to report them, but Julie just wants to stay in the hotel to get some rest. Eventually, Julie removes the amulet before doing some smelly workout with Jim. During the process, Julie screams and hides inside the comfort room as she sees Watabe behind Jim. Jim then decides to go to the nearest pharmacy to buy medicines for Julie. Before he goes out, he asks the receptionist about Bill and Robert. It's then revealed that they already checked out this morning, along with a woman Jim hasn't met before. Alone in the room, Julie gets her camera and scrolls at the pictures. She's frightened as she sees pictures of herself holding the camera with Watabe at her back. Suddenly, the lights on the whole floor go out, and Julie has to resort to her flashlight. As soon as she goes out, the door of her room closes on its own. Suddenly, she sees herself in an abandoned building. She then sees Watabe in a burning house, so she hurriedly runs her smelly ass away. Unfortunately, her flashlight loses its battery. When she's able to turn it on, she sees a scary face of Watabe. It's then revealed that Julie is just hallucinating, and she's still in the hotel corridor. Then Jim arrives and brings her to the hospital, where she still sees ghosts. According to the doctor, they conducted tests on Julie, and she seems fine. The doctor shares that there's another woman who had the same situation as Julie, but the woman was just discharged from the hospital earlier that day. The doctor adds that the woman is anxious to get back to her country, together with two men. Jim remembers that the receptionist told him that Robert and Bill were with a woman, so he suspects that they're the people the doctor is talking about. To prove his suspicion, he quickly goes to the airport with the driver. In the airport, Jim sees Robert, Bill, and the woman. He has an intense fight with Robert, but he loses. It turns out, they befriended the couple in order to pass the curse from Robert's girlfriend to Julie. Bill feels guilty, so he gives Jim the shaman's number, who could help Julie. That night, Jim goes to an abandoned building where the shaman leaves. According to the shaman, the only way that could save Julie is for them to transfer the curse to another person, just like what Robert and Bill did to them. In the hospital, Julie wakes up, tied to the hospital bed. After a while, she screams out loud as she sees Watabe. Jim then arrives and calls the doctor to calm her down. Jim feels so sorry for Julie, so even if against his will, he goes to the city with the driver to look for someone to pass the curse on. In a restaurant, Jim befriends a foreign couple and shares about the ghost house, which excites them a lot. As they drink, he secretly gets the woman's scarf. When they're about to leave, his conscience bothers him, so he doesn't pursue his plan. He decides to get Julie to the hospital and brings her to the shaman. Despite the danger, Jim takes the servant's gun and strikes him with it, causing him to lose consciousness. Then he goes to the shaman's room and forces him to go with him, so as to find a solution to cure Julie. According to the shaman, when the victims receive the curse, they only have three days to pass it to others, or else, Watabe will eat their soul. It's been two days since Julie got the curse, so the shaman rushes to bring them to the witch doctor. Julie's condition is getting worse, so she desperately begs Jim to shoot her to end her suffering. After a while, she's terrified to see Watabe on the side of the car. To calm her down, Jim injects her with a tranquilizer. Instantly, the driver stops the car, as he sees an accident that involves a motorcycle and a truck. The men get out of the car to check the situation. As he goes near, Jim vomits, because he cannot stand to see the victim's corpse lying on the ground. Meanwhile, Julie runs to the woods, as she sees the ghost of one of the victims, knocking on the door. She then stops in front of the ghost houses. Thereafter, she screams, as she sees Watabe behind her. The men hear Julie scream, so they hurriedly go to the woods to look for her. They are terrified to see Julie surrounded by fire. Afterward, she loses consciousness. The shaman orders them to carry Julie, because they don't have enough time left. They walk for a couple of hours, then ride a boat to the witch doctor's house. 
Soon after, the motor of the boat suddenly dies. According to the shaman, the locals don't want to go to that place because it's surrounded with evil spirits. Later on, in Julie's unconscious state, she sees a ghost from the water that forcefully pulls her. Luckily, the boat's motor starts, so the ghost fails to get Julie. The team arrives at the witch doctor's house before the sun rises. The couple and the driver go inside while the shaman waits outside. Then they see the witch doctor together with her servants. The witch doctor tells them that she can't offer her help since Julie disturbs Watabe's ghost house. Jim begs for the witch doctor's help and explains that Julie is innocent and was just deceived. The witch doctor tells Jim that he needs to give up something important to save Julie. Jim then gives their engagement ring, but the witch doctor says that it isn't enough and he should offer his finger instead. However, Jim doesn't agree, so the witch doctor doesn't have a choice but to try if the engagement ring will work. Julie screams endlessly as the witch doctor and her servants start their ritual. Then the angry Watabe appears and knocks the servants down. As Watabe puts her hand inside Julie's mouth, the driver gets the knife and throws it to Jim. Instantly, Jim cuts his finger, which scares the shit out of Watabe. When the driver hands Jim's finger to the witch doctor, she immediately begins the ritual that drives Watabe away. Julie then wakes up and vomits dark liquid. Luckily, all of them survive. A few days later, the driver takes Jim and Julie to the airport. As soon as they leave, the driver goes back to his work as a tour guide. The movie ends with the couple that Jim attempted to pass the curse on earlier. They are in an antique shop, planning to buy an old ghost house. When the camera zooms in, an eye is seen inside the ghost house. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.